Hello, Jim Matthews from GlassHoppa.com. Need something holiday themed that you can make for friends or family? One pot of coffee and one morning in the studio will yield a quota of these with minimal materials and few frustrations. I like them in a window or on a stand instead of as tree ornaments where they never seem to get enough light. They look great with nightlight hardware behind them too. You can choose to use a base like this one or skip this and assemble right on the kiln shelf. We'll do one of each together and consider their pros and cons. If you're using a base, it's a good idea to savage the edges. That is, nip away the straight lines so that the base blends into the tree branches better. See what I've done there? I'll just draw a quick center line for reference. Now let's nip up some tree branches. Scrap piece of glass with one straight edge. I'll start by just nipping little crescents up that edge. These pieces will have one curved and one straight edge and that's fine. We'll use them, but they're not optimal. You get optimal by next nipping into the troughs you just created. Place your nipping wheels at the bottom of the curve an eighth inch or so deep and you'll create little squigglies. The technical term for these is little organic squigglies and they can be very useful in certain designs. Using thin glass you can actually make teensy weensy organic squigglies. Great for flower stamen, bug legs, bite-sized fish skeletons, and so on. So make yourself a batch of little squigglies, grease up your base, I'm using aloe vera gel to give these guys something to stick to. And grab your tweezers. I just make a chevron-like pattern. Each one angling down from the center line. Sort of like the branches on an evergreen tree. Don't get too caught up in perfection or sizing. As long as the top is narrow and the bottom is wide, it's going to look like a tree. So just keep that much in mind. I keep the nippers handy because some of these will need to be downsized, especially as I get toward the top. And there's layer one. I left some space at the top there for a pinnacle ornament of some kind. Now I'm going to give this a few shots of white rain so the next layer will have something to stick to. Now where the first layer is chevron-like, the next are placed at a steeper angle, even straight down the center, and there don't have to be very many. The crossing edges create all kinds of refraction and sparkle. The first layer, sergeant's stripes. The next layer, a steeper angle, like they're coming at you instead of pointing out to the sides. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Now this is white rain again to keep everything nice and gluey. Now let's add a little goody in prime position. Everybody's got a little goody collection, right? Now you're in charge of deciding how to decorate your tree. I'm starting with dark green medium frit that I've screened to remove the fines. I screen frits when I want more or less uniform sized pieces. And I want to make sure that I get some way out on the tips of my branches. Another squirt. And then some transparent red medium for it, also screened. And I'll call that done. And this time we'll skip the base altogether. I'm going to draw guidelines right on the firing paper, which is already on the shelf. 
I'm going to put some gel right on my guidelines on the firing paper. The advantages of using a base are flat uniform back to accept a hanging loop. I'll show you that in a minute. And a flat solid spot at the top to accept the pinnacle ornament. But that's an easy fix. And you don't have to build on the shelf. The advantages of not using a base are less weight, less work, and lower cost. And actually, I think all in all, just a little bit more refined. Layer 1 Layer 2 I decided to sprinkle in a little bit of clear medium frit to add a little volume where I saw holes and I used iridescent to add a little sparkle added a marini slice at the apex then I proceeded to nip some tips off a red rod see how I use my thumbnail to gauge the thickness of my nip you can actually get these pretty thin and uniform if you squeeze the nippers with increasing strength instead of just snapping them down I added some smaller pieces of red too same as the other one not too much just seemed to need a little something more To make a fused in hanging loop without wire, I slice up a half inch wide strip of fiber paper and a half inch wide strip of clear glass into pieces about an inch and a quarter long. The triangle here represents our tree or anything else you want to put a hanging loop in. We're going to fuse the little clear strip to the back of our piece using the fiber paper in between the two to create a void. I like to glue these because placement is critical. Now I am using a special structural engineering adhesive here, one that dries perfectly clear and used sparingly will not leave a residue. If you want to grab a pen or pencil I'll spell the name for you. It's E L M E R apostrophe S. See how that's going to work? Here's how it lays on the shelf. Okay, let's see how they fired up. I was a little concerned about this one being too fragile, not having a base. But it's fine. backside. There are plenty of holes in this to run a hanging wire through, but next time I would locate those on purpose. It's plenty substantial. And here's our clear guy with base and integrated internal hanging loop. See the clear strip and the fiber paper which we can dig out now there see Now I don't have time to make another project, but here's a little holiday bonus for you. 
no reason why you can't use this same technique to make a wreath. Just work in a circle. The center circle is your hole in the middle, of course. The lighter line is your center line for reference. So you just lay down your squigglies just like we did for the tree. All the way around. Then a steeper set that cross hatches. All the way around. I have had a number of requests for wreath designs, so hopefully this will fill the bill. One is a number. Happy holidays, everybody.